Danny and I booked a cozy Airbnb rental in a picturesque coastal town for our romantic weekend getaway. We were eager to escape the stresses of our busy lives. As we settled into the quaint cottage, little did we know we were being watched. As we prepared for bed on the first night, I noticed something peculiar protruding from the ceiling. Upon closer inspection, we realized it was a small camera disguised as a smoke detector. Shock and anger washed over us as we realized the invasion of our privacy. We began a frantic search in the room and then uncovered more hidden cameras strategically placed throughout the house. Anguish turned to fear as we realized we had been recorded during even our intimate moments. Our sense of security was shattered. We felt violated and exposed. With trembling hands, we contacted Airbnb to report the disturbing discovery. The company assured us they would immediately investigate and offered to relocate us. But the damage was done, and the trust we once had in the platform was irreparably tarnished. News of the hidden camera incident spread, and other guests who had stayed at the same rental came forward with similar experiences. It soon became clear the host had been secretly violating guest privacy for months. Authorities launched an investigation, which led to the host's arrest on charges of invasion of privacy and unlawful surveillance. This incident sent shockwaves through the Airbnb community and prompted calls for stricter regulations and safeguards to protect guests. For Jenny and me, the trauma of being spied on still lingers long after we returned home. The once idyllic getaway had turned into a nightmare and left us questioning the safety and security of accommodations, not only with Airbnb, but with all hotels and rentals. A weekend of relaxation and fun turned into a bizarre ordeal for me and my friends. We found the perfect vacation home on Airbnb. It was a charming cottage nestled in the countryside. Sadly, our excitement turned to disbelief when we arrived at the property. We noticed a figure lurking in the shadows of the porch as we approached the cottage. Confusion turned to alarm when the stranger warmly greeted us and claimed to be the owner of the house. My friends and I exchanged nervous glances. We instinctively knew something was terribly wrong. The stranger introduced himself as Greg. He said that he had rented the property long term from the real owner, who authorized him to list it on Airbnb. I checked my booking confirmation, which clearly stated that we had exclusive use of the property for the weekend. We reluctantly entered the cottage. We already felt uneasy, but we're still unsure of what to do. Our discomfort only grew as we explored the house and found someone else's belongings scattered throughout. It was clear that Greg had been living there for quite some time. I immediately contacted Airbnb to report the situation, but no one could reach the home's actual owner as listed with their company. Meanwhile, Greg completely made himself at home. He cooked meals in the kitchen and lounged in the living room, as if he owned the place. Tensions eventually reached a breaking point. Greg adamantly refused to leave. He cited his supposed lease agreement with the absentee owner. My friends and I felt trapped, unsure of how to handle the escalating situation. We considered calling the police, but were hesitant to involve law enforcement in what seemed like a bizarre misunderstanding. As the standoff continued, we debated our options. We ultimately decided to cut our losses and find alternative accommodation for the weekend, unwilling to spend another minute in the presence of the unwelcome intruder. Our Airbnb nightmare didn't end there, though. We spent hours on the phone with customer support, demanding a refund and compensation for the ordeal we had endured. It took weeks of back-and-forth communication before Airbnb finally acknowledged their mistake and offered a full refund. The incident left us shaken and disillusioned with Airbnb. We vowed never to use the platform again, opting for traditional hotels and accommodations where the risk of encountering squatters was significantly lower. But the memory of our bizarre encounter with Greg, if that was even his name, still haunts us years later. When my family booked a beautiful rental house on Airbnb for a weekend getaway, we were enchanted by its grandeur and historical charm. It was a sprawling mansion with a storied past, nestled on the outskirts of a sleepy town. Sadly, the house held dark secrets that would soon unravel our hopes. As we arrived, we were greeted by the imposing facade and overgrown gardens. The property was indeed neglected. Despite its eerie appearance, we brushed off our initial reservations and crossed the threshold into the grand foyer. An unsettling feeling washed over us from the moment we stepped inside. The air was thick with a palpable sense of foreboding. Shadows danced along the walls as if they had a life of their own. We chalked it up to our overactive imaginations and pressed on with our plans. The true horror of the mansion began to reveal itself as night fell. Strange noises echoed through the halls, from disembodied whispers to the sounds of phantom footsteps pacing the corridors. 
Doors slammed shut of their own accord, and icy drafts chilled the air despite the roaring fireplace. Our youngest daughter, Emily, was the first to experience the house's malevolent presence. She claimed to see shadowy figures lurking in the corners of her room, and felt cold hands brushing against her skin in the dead of night. We dismissed her claims as nightmares, but deep down, we knew there was something sinister at play. Our suspicions were confirmed when we stumbled upon a hidden room in the attic, concealed behind a boarded up wall. Inside, we found relics of a dark past, ancient tomes bound in leather, arcane symbols etched into the floorboards, and a weathered diary recounting tales of madness and despair. As the weekend wore on, we found ourselves ensnared in the mansion's grip and unable to escape its malevolent influence. It grew clear the mansion was haunted by the spirits of its former inhabitants. Their tormented souls were trapped between the realms of the living and the dead. The restless spirits sought retribution for past wrongs, and we were unwittingly caught in the crossfire. We fled the mansion terrified and out of options. The horrors of our stay forever burned in our minds. The memories of that weekend in the haunted house still linger. As we drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that I left part of myself behind, somewhere in that darkness. It was supposed to be a relaxing weekend getaway for my friends and me. We booked a charming Airbnb cottage in the countryside. We couldn't wait to escape the hustle and bustle of city life. Unfortunately, our idyllic retreat took a sinister turn when we arrived at the property. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off as we pulled up to the cottage. The atmosphere was eerily quiet, and there was no sign of our host. We shrugged it off as a simple misunderstanding and ventured inside, eager to settle in and start our vacation. But as hours passed, our host was still nowhere to be found. I tried calling and messaging multiple times, but every attempt went unanswered. We searched the property from top to bottom, but there was no trace of the elusive individual. The sun began to set, and unease settled over us. The once charming cottage now felt like a trap, with its empty rooms and looming shadows. We debated whether to stay or leave, but ultimately decided to tough it out. We couldn't just cite a missing host as our reason for leaving. We hoped the host would show soon. Our anxiety only grew as the night wore on. Every creak of the floorboards or rustle of the wind outside sent shivers down our spines. We couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched or studied. Like someone, or something, lurked just out of sight. I reached out to Airbnb customer support in a desperate attempt to find answers. Even they couldn't provide any information about the missing host. It was as if they vanished into thin air and left nothing behind but unanswered questions and a sense of dread. Hours turned into days. There was still no sign of the host. My friends and I felt like prisoners in the cottage trapped by our own uncertainty and fear. We couldn't stand the empty quiet any longer. We packed our bags and fled, and left behind the eerie silence of the deserted property. The experience haunted me long after we returned home. I struggled with lingering feelings of unease and distrust. What happened to our host, and what secrets did the abandoned cottage hold? The mysteries remain unsolved. My friends and I finally arrived at our Airbnb rental. We were excited to spend the weekend exploring the charming town and relaxing in our cozy accommodations. Our excitement, however, turned to unease when we discovered a locked door in the hallway. It wasn't mentioned in the listing. I tried the handle, but it wouldn't budge. The door was securely locked, with no keyhole or visible means of entry. We reached out to the host for an explanation, but received only vague reassurances that the storage room was off limits and shouldn't bother us. We couldn't shake our curiosity about the locked room, despite the host's cryptic response. We speculated about what secrets it might hold, from hidden treasures to sinister mysteries best left undiscovered. Our attempts to pry it open were futile, and the door remained stubbornly shut. The locked room became a source of tension and intrigue among us. As the weekend wore on, we couldn't help but feel like we were being watched. As if the secrets in the mysterious room whispered to us from behind its sealed door, Every creak of the floorboards and rustle of the curtains seemed to hint that something sinister lurking just out of sight. We launched our own investigation into the locked room. We were determined to uncover the truth. We searched for clues. We poured over every nook and cranny in search of a key or hidden entrance. The more we searched, the more elusive the answers became. Our efforts were further complicated by the strange occurrences throughout the rental. Objects seemed to move on their own, and eerie noises echoed through the halls at night couldn't shake the feeling we were being watched, as if someone, or something, lurked in the shadows and waited for the perfect moment to reveal itself. 
We decided to confront the host in a last ditch effort to unlock the secrets of the locked room. But when we arrived at the address listed in the Airbnb booking information, we found an abandoned building. Its windows were boarded up and its doors sealed shut. We fled the rental terrified and bewildered. We reported our situation to Airbnb. They investigated and discovered the host was living in that little room. Things were moved because they went through our stuff when we were outside. The sounds that came from the little room were the host moving around. A shiver ran down my spine as soon as my family and I entered the Airbnb rental. The quaint cottage nestled at the edge of the forest seemed welcoming from the outside. An unsettling feeling washed over me as I stepped through the front door. We were met with a vast collection of antique dolls displayed throughout the living room. Their porcelain faces stared blankly at us, their glass eyes following our every move. Some sat in tiny rocking chairs, while others perched on dusty shelves, their delicate dresses frozen in time. I tried to shake off the unease that settled over me. I chalked it up to my overactive imagination as hours passed and the sun began to set. The dolls seemed to take on a life of their own. Their once innocent expressions twisted into sinister grimaces. I couldn't shake the feeling that they were watching us. There were several times I could have swore a couple of the dolls actually moved. As we settled into our beds that night, it was impossible to sleep. Every floorboard creak and curtain rustle sent chills down my spine. The scariest thing I experienced, however, was the sound of tiny footsteps echoing through the hall. I stood and peeked back through the door. The dolls still lined the shelves in the living room. I half expected to see them come to life and run towards me. Their lifeless eyes seemed to glow in the darkness. I couldn't shake the feeling that they plotted something sinister. The faint sound of laughter began to drift through the cottage. Thankfully, my family was fast asleep. I heard children laughing. It was playful and innocent, yet somehow tinged with malice. I buried my head under the covers, praying for morning to come. I couldn't wait to escape the eerie confines of the cottage when daylight finally broke. We packed our bags hastily, eager to put as much distance between us and the creepy doll collection as possible. As we drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that the dolls watched us go. I heard that phantom laughter ringing in my ears. To this day, the memory of that unsettling rental haunts me. As I glance at the dolls lining the shelves of any antique store we visit, I can't help but wonder what sinister forces lie behind their glassy stares. I never believed in ghosts until that fateful weekend in Willow Hollow. It was supposed to be a relaxing getaway with friends, a chance to escape everyday life stresses and enjoy peaceful countryside. Little did we know we were about to encounter something beyond our wildest nightmares. I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled over me as we arrived at the cottage, nestled deep in the woods. The air was heavy, laden with a sense of foreboding that quickened my pulse and tied my stomach in knots. I just brushed it off as pre-weekend jitters and followed my friends inside. The quaint cottage was charming. It had a rustic decor that seemed genuine. It was even accompanied by a cozy fireplace. We settled in unpacked our bags and made plans for the weekend ahead. As night fell and darkness enveloped the woods outside, strange things began to happen. It started with subtle noises. A creaking floorboard here, a faint whisper there. We just laughed it off and attributed the sounds to the old age of the cottage. But as the night wore on, the noises grew louder, more persistent. They echoed through the halls like a chorus of unseen voices. Then we heard footsteps. The heavy, deliberate sounds echoed through the cottage with an otherworldly intensity. We froze in fear, unable to comprehend what we were hearing. There was no logical explanation for the sound of footsteps in an empty house. We couldn't simply brush that off as natural sounds. They weren't. It was only going to get worse. The true horror came when we saw her, a woman dressed in white, her eyes hollow and vacant. She drifted through the darkness, a specter from another time. She didn't speak and didn't acknowledge our presence in any way. She simply floated through the cottage. Her gaze was fixed on something we couldn't see. We tried to rationalize everything. It was just a trick of the light, or a figment of imagination. But deep down, we knew the truth. Willow Hollow Cottage was haunted, and we were the unwilling guests. We huddled together in the living room, terrified, seeking solace in each other's presence. The sense of dread continued to hang heavy in the air. It suffocated us with its oppressive weight. We knew we had to leave, but thoughts of venturing into the darkness outside filled us with a primal terror. Whatever might be out there could be far worse than what was inside. Morning couldn't come soon enough. As the first light of dawn broke through the trees, we fled the cottage. 
We left the nightmare that had haunted us through the night, but it didn't do us as much good as you would think. We never spoke of that weekend again. Each of us silently carries the weight of our experience. Years have passed since that weekend, but the memory of the haunting at Willow Hollow Cottage still haunts me. I may never know the truth of what happened that night. I don't think I want to. I'll never forget the weekend my friends and I spent at the old Victorian mansion we found on Airbnb. It was a grand, imposing structure. Its faded elegance hinted at a rich history. It called out to us like a siren song. Little did we know, the mansion held secrets darker than any of us could have imagined. Once we arrived at the mansion, excitement bubbled in the pit of my stomach. I couldn't wait to explore its labyrinthine halls and hidden nooks to soak in the atmosphere of a bygone era. My friends were the same, but as we stepped through the ornate double doors, a chill washed over me. I had the distinct sense of being watched by unseen eyes. The mansion was even more magnificent inside, with a grand staircase, elaborate chandeliers, and towering ceilings. We wandered through the rooms in awe. Each chamber was more opulent than the last. But as night fell and shadows danced along the walls, the atmosphere shifted, it grew charged with an electric tension that set my nerves on edge. The activity started with small things. Objects seemed to move on their own. Some of us heard strange whispers echo through the halls brushed everything off. A house that ancient was bound to have quirks. As the night wore on, the disturbances grew more pronounced, more sinister. I'll never forget the moment we saw him. A man dressed in an ancient suit, his face obscured by shadows. He stood at the top of the staircase. He didn't speak or even move, but his presence filled the air with an icy dread. It was as if he were studying the area. We rationalized what we were seeing, a reflection of some sort product of mass hysteria, but deep down, we knew the truth. The mansion was haunted, and we were at the mercy of forces beyond our comprehension. We huddled together in the parlor. Once we noticed the malevolent presence lurked in the shadows of the stairs and corridors. The apparition didn't follow us in there. Unfortunately, no matter where we went, we couldn't escape the feeling that someone or something studied us. We started to suspect we were being preyed upon by something ancient and insatiable. As the first light of dawn filtered through the windows, we gathered our belongings and fled the mansion. We left behind the nightmares that haunted us through the night. The memory of the shadows that lurked in the halls of that old Victorian mansion will haunt me forever. The Whispering Woods retreat seemed like an ideal escape from the hustle and bustle. It was tucked away in a remote corner of the countryside. It was surrounded by towering trees and the gentle sounds of nature. Most importantly, it promised peace and tranquility. As my friends and I soon discovered, the woods held dark secrets. When we arrived at the retreat, the air was thick with an eerie stillness that seeped into our bones. Trees loomed ominously overhead. Their branches swayed in the breeze like skeletal fingers reaching for the sky. We ignored our initial trepidation. The cabin was charming and cozy, with log walls and a stone fireplace. We settled in quickly, unpacked our bags. As night fell, and darkness descended upon the woods, strange things began to happen. We couldn't just chalk it up to exhaustion or imagination. Something we couldn't explain was at work. We started hearing faint talking, like a radio in the distance, or someone talking from across a field. We brushed it off as tricks of the wind. That was just a harbinger of what was to come. As night wore on, the talking grew louder and more forceful. It filled the air with another worldly cacophony. The shadows came next. Dark, shifting shapes, almost like liquid. They flitted through the trees like phantoms in the night. We watched in horror as they danced on the edge of our vision. They never quite revealed themselves in the light of the moon. As dawn broke and the first light of morning filtered through the trees, we gathered our belongings and fled the retreat, leaving behind the horrors of the whispering woods. I don't know what that was, and I don't care. I was just grateful to survive. It was supposed to be our peaceful weekend retreat. Adam and I booked a cozy cabin in the woods through Airbnb. We craved some time away from our customary chaotic schedule. Sadly, our experience would leave us questioning our decision to escape. A sense of tranquility washed over us as we settled into the cabin. The air was crisp, and the only sound was the gentle rustling of leaves in the breeze. That first day was the most ideal we had ever enjoyed. As night fell and darkness enveloped the forest, a strange noise began to echo through the cabin. At first it was faint, a soft
soft scratching sound coming from somewhere above us. We exchanged nervous glances, unsure of what could be causing the noise. We eventually brushed it off as an animal, or perhaps the house settling, but the unsettling feeling lingered. The scratching grew louder, more insistent as the night wore on. We concluded it must be coming from the attic, even though the cabin's layout didn't include an upper level. That didn't mean there wasn't one. Our unease turned to curiosity once we decided it was a noise in the attic. We ventured outside to investigate. We took our flashlight outside, to the other side of the cabin. We assumed the attic entrance might be there. But there was no visible access point. We grew more confused than scared. It was like the noise came from thin air, some kind of ghostly presence haunting the cabin. The scratching continued unabated when we returned inside. It echoed through the walls like a sinister whisper. We tried to ignore it and went to bed. Sleep eluded us as we laid awake and listened to the eerie sound that seemed to grow louder with each passing minute. We decided to confront the source of the noise once and for all as dawn came. Armed with determination and a sense of dread, we tore apart the cabin and searched for any sign of the mysterious attic. But our efforts were in vain and we found no trace of the hidden space. We packed our bags and left the cabin behind. We were eventually able to ask the property owner about the noises in the attic. We were told the home had no attic. The memory of the mysterious noise haunted us long after we returned home. To this day, we still wonder what could have caused the eerie scratching in the depths of the forest.